What's up everyone, it's your boy Norbrad89 here bringing you another video and for today's video we're going to bring you the spoiler chat for The Flash. I know it's been a while since it's been out, a lot of people have gotten a chance to go see it but not a lot of people because this film actually hasn't been doing that great in the box office and like I said today we're going to kind of discuss spoiler stuff, you know, more in depth, kind of also reasons why I think the film's doing so bad but also reasons why I still like the film and things that I still have problems with. Because like I said, it's still not a perfect film, but it was one of my favorite theater experiences that I've had so far this year. So like I said, today we're talking spoilers for The Flash. That's your last warning. If you haven't seen this film, get out of here. Go check it out because I still recommend it. I highly recommend it. I still have a positive feeling on it, positive review. You can check out my non-spoiler review as well if you want to get my thoughts on it. So let's do this. Roll it. One thing right off the bat I know we have to just get this right out of the way is just that the disappointing box office for Warner Brothers with the Flash movie, this film is definitely going to be losing some money. And I think there's a lot of big reasons why that's happening and stuff. I don't think this is a bad movie. Like, don't let the box office necessarily reflect what the movie is. Like I said, I think there's a lot of contributing reasons why the box office is so low with this film. Don't let that affect your opinion on this movie. And I think it's because bad timing in terms of the release. This film's been on the shelf for many years and in post-production hell for many years. So that's a big problem is when you have so much time between the announcement of the film to the actual release... Some people tend to just not give a shit by the time you get to that point. You know what I mean? You're just waiting so long. You can only hold interest with so many people, mostly the diehard fans or the ones who are into superhero movies or cinephiles, people like me who like watching tons of movies and stuff like that. Those are the people who are going to still be interested. But in terms of the basic audience, just the regular people, they're not going to be really down for it or like interested anymore because they've been waiting for so many years. Add to that. This film has Ezra Miller in it, and we must discuss that as what he did in, you know, in his real life and the tabloids and the newspapers basically throughout the whole year prior to this release of the film. It's just, yeah, not good for the look of the film. And I know a whole host of people that wouldn't see this movie because of that reason, and I have no gripe with that at all. Like I said, it's understandable what he did is, you know, what they did, Ezra Miller as a person very awful things and he, I hope they get help and they're needing that mental kind of help because a lot of people do. So I'm hoping that's actually something that, you know, Ezra's seeking out. But now on to another reason is that, like I said, to company with the bad timing is that this is superhero fatigue. We are living in the true era right now. This last, I want to say like five months, six months has been superhero fatigue heavy and a lot of superhero movies have missed the mark not just the flash like just in general you know black adam we had eternals we had so many movies that have been releasing you know so often and even multiverse of madness not everybody loved that film so this is you know we're in that height of superhero fatigue so i think that plays a huge factor also into why the box office for The Flash is really low. But let's start discussing some of the reasons and some things that I think about The Flash and some spoilers. Let's, like, let's get also like some things about negatives right out, right of the way. Now we can talk spoilers is that I think the third act of this film is a little bit rushed and it feels kind of forced and everything. And one other thing that I was missing from our third act that I really wanted to see was this character right here. We have the reverse flash, and I'm sorry, this box is like damaged. This is actually the very first pop hero I ever got. So the reverse flash, AKA Ebert Thawne, is uh, you know, an ancient, like, or is an ancestor, you know, a descendant of the Flash character Barry Allen and is one of the main villains to Barry Allen and is the purpose in the comics and also in the TV show why Barry Allen's mother is killed and in this film they don't even dive into that like Barry doesn't even try to figure out who stabbed her there's at no point in this time does he try to go and figure out like who can I get for this you know what I mean who are we going to really charge like he's just focused on having his mom back and making sure his dad doesn't go to prison that we kind of just skip over this huge thing and that's one thing for me it's like I could understand why some Flash fans might be upset about that like I was upset about that because when I went into this film I was like I thought they did really good with the marketing I was like there's going to be a secondary villain you know General Zod isn't going to be the only villain in this film 
and I really thought they were going to give us reverse flash and it was going to play into the movie. But, you know, also like seeing the trailers, it kind of led on a little bit that I saw it and I told my wife before we went to see it, I was like, yeah, I think the other Barry is going to end up being the villain. And there is, like I said, the version of him that ends up, you know, kind of getting mutated and stuff like that and gets messed up because he keeps trying to fix a certain moment in time that is inevitable and stuff like that and becomes our villain in that third act. So I think it's a little rush and it's a little forced and everything. And another thing we have to get out of the way is the CGI. After seeing it a second time, it's like I said, I've seen this movie twice now, actually. The CGI still doesn't hold up. The CGI is really bad. And we've heard reports and interviews from Andy Muschietti that it's actually on purpose that the reason they did the CGI that way is because when you're in the Speed Force and you're looking through Barry Allen's eyes that things are supposed to be distorted in some fashion because, you know, it's something that we don't see as normal humans and stuff. So it's supposed to be distorted in a way. But yeah, the graphics are definitely like, you know, PS2 level type graphics and stuff like that. So that doesn't help the film. But for me, the reason why I gave this film a huge up and it got that 9 out of 10, but if I'm real honest and more critical with the film, for me, it's probably an 8 out of 10, but it's just because the journey it took me on. I loved the Barry Allen journey. I loved the emotional moments, the payoff moments. Like, I thought they all worked, like, especially that moment with his mom when he gets to see his mom and he has to, like, take the tomato can out of the shopping cart and he sees her and she thinks he's just some, like, you know, dude in the shopping market that needs a hug, like, that moment was very emotionally potent. All the moments with Michael Keaton were very good as well. So having him back as Batman, just so iconic. So that's one thing I could understand if you're not either a huge fan of Michael Keaton or Batman and that doesn't hold a lot of weight for you as a child, you're not gonna be into that. But for me, you know, Michael Keaton was my first live action Batman. So it was just fantastic to see him back in this film. I think all the moments all the teaching moments he had. He had a lot more character moments and development in this film than he gets in even his own Tim Burton movie. But for me, in terms of multiverse films, when it comes to Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, and No Way Home, I have yet to see an Across from the Spider-Verse, but out of those two and this Flash movie, I actually think Flash has a better, more earned character arc and a better story inside of it. So like I said, there's just a couple huge negatives, which is the glaring CGI and the fact that we kind of glanced over this character right here. We glanced over who killed his mom. They kind of just really scapegoated that entire thing because they didn't want to add that subplot because we had, you know, you know, Supergirl, a new character in here that we had to introduce and show off and stuff and basically execute the Flashpoint storyline in this film. And, you know, the, the comic's a great run. That Flashpoint storyline is a very epic storyline. Also, the... Uh, comic uh, comic movie the animated movie that they did for dc is very fantastic as well but yeah in terms of live action multiverse films like i'm down with this one the time travel the jokes the comedy for me landed i would say 75 percent times more than like not so it was only about like 25 percent of the comedy that i was kind of like eh, nah but most of it i was feeling it supergirl did a fantastic job and stuff and everything and michael keaton was a banger General Zod, I think we could have had a little bit more of him. We could have had a little bit more of Michael Shannon. It was great for what he was there for and what they represented, but we could have had a little more. And I think the third act fight was a, it was action packed and I had a lot of fun, but in terms of, I want to say the setting, I think we could have had a better setting, like, you know, just for where they were fighting. But in terms of the action that was going on, I was very enthralled with the film and said, seriously, in IMAX, it was a fantastic watch said for me flash is still one that i give a positive review if i'm more critical and more focused on it more strict with the film it's definitely probably like an eight out of ten but in terms of the enjoyment and what i loved and what i got out of the movie especially being a dc lover and a flash lover flash is one of my favorite characters in the dc universe it delivered in spades so nine out of ten for me was a very comfortable rating and for right now as it sits this is in my top three of the favorite films that I've seen this year. There's still some more I have to check out. You know, I haven't seen every film, but in terms of, yeah, the, the films that I have seen, you know, The Flash, Evil Dead Rise, and Influencer are kind of the top three right now in terms of the ones that I've enjoyed the most 
this year but these are just my thoughts my opinions on the flash like i said why it's doing you know so bad in the box office but why i think it deserves some more love especially like I said there's character moments that are highly earned in this film and you know despite what ezra miller has done and everything it's there's so many other people that had their hands in working on this film and so many other people that put a lot of effort into this movie and yeah i think it's worth the watch for sure so the flash i can't wait to own this one it's going to be very exciting. But like I said, in the comment section, let me know what you thought of the film. Your thoughts, don't be afraid to spoil away in this video because this is the spoiler one. But be sure to also like, subscribe. That helps out the channel a lot and have that notification bell poked so you're notified anytime I post videos. But most importantly, I want you all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.